Good morning. Last week was a long week for me. I was battling some sort of pestilence. I don't know what it was, but uh, oh, I got tired of uh, seeing the bedroom, got tired of the bed, got tired of just, just got miserably tired. Um, I don't know if you've ever been there before. I don't know. I can't remember the last time I felt uh, that miserable. And as I began to feel better toward the end of the week last week, I began to start, I would begin to think about sickness and wellness and what all that uh, means and started thinking about the nature of sickness and where sickness comes from. And I know uh, sometimes it comes from a, uh, from a bacterium, sometimes it comes from a virus. It's treated differently depending on where it comes from. You know, the some sicknesses are genetic. Sometimes we call them conditions rather than uh, sicknesses. Some of them are caused by our environment. Um, and uh, then also there's a mental sickness, emotional sickness, and uh, even a spiritual sickness, which, be con which can be connected to that. You know, the uh, sage said in Proverbs chapter 18, the spirit of a man can endure his sicknesses, sickness, but as for a broken spirit, who can bear it? And sometimes there's nothing worse than a spiritual sickness. And so hopefully some of the reflections that I have this morning will encourage you, maybe even provoke you in a, in a good way. Um, so here's some things I want to share with you that I was thinking about uh, last week. Um, first one is simply this. It's good to accept help when you're seriously sick. It's good to accept help, when, especially when you're seriously sick. And, you know, I don't know if you're like me. Uh, I don't like to go to the doctor. And sometimes I wait till the last minute, or maybe I don't go to the doctor at all. And the people around me are, uh, are saying, you need to go see uh, the doctor. And I remember the last time that I, re I refused to see a doctor when I was feeling really bad. I finally went, and uh, they looked at me, they listened to me, and said, you have pneumonia. And I wound up getting put in the hospital, and I was there for almost an entire week. And uh, so it was, and it was a good thing I went, because they told me that I had very uh, significant uh, pneumonia. But, you know, so we need to accept help when we're sick. And this is especially true when we're emotionally sick or spiritually sick. I was thinking of a passage in James chapter 5. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn there. James chapter 5 and verse 14. And notice what uh, James uh, reminds us of here in this passage. It says, uh, Is anyone among you sick? Let them call for the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. And the Lord will raise them up and if they sin, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And it occurs to me that uh, the word here, sick, isn't talking just about physical sickness, but it's talking about spiritual sickness. It's talking about emotional sickness. Uh, in fact, that word can also be translated helpless, weak, has the idea of being beat down. And uh, sometimes uh, when we are uh, just beat down, we can't lift ourselves up, we don't even want to get out of bed, we especially need to call for somebody to come and encourage us. And this tells us, do not isolate yourselves. Um, why in the world would I isolate myself when I am that bad? And I can only think of one thing. It's probably pride, right? You know, I've got this. I don't need anyone. I can pull myself up by my own bootstraps. You've ever wondered, you ever tried to picture that? And wh what does that look like? How do you pull yourself up by your own bootstraps? It doesn't work. Uh, Christianity is not a isolation one team or one man team sort of thing. We need to seek help, strength, and encouragement from each other. The second thing that occurred to me was this. Uh, sickness is often cumulative. Did you hear that? Sickness is often cumulative. What do I mean by that? Sometimes when we're not well, it's the result of a long habit of personal neglect. And I know some of us uh, deal with uh, different types of sicknesses and illnesses. I, have, uh, I deal with uh, high blood pressure. I deal with being a diabetic. And as uh, I can understand more about these sorts of things, it, uh, 
occurred to me that these sorts of things didn't happen overnight and sometimes the result of years of neglect and for myself uh, not taking care of myself being overweight and uh, not eating right and uh, years of, of uh, living in this way uh, finally and not exercising finally caught up with me and you know the same is true spiritually um, Isaiah chapter 1 paints a picture of the people of God and how they look like due to years of, uh, of uh, active neglect. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 5 says, Why should you be beaten anymore? Why do you persist in rebellion? Your whole head is injured. Your whole heart is afflicted. From the sole of your foot to the top of your head, there is no soundness. Only wounds and welts, open sores, not cleansed or bandaged or soothed with olive oil. And so the condition God's people were in, it, in other words, this isn't something that happened overnight. It, it happened as a result of years and years of neglect. Those little things began to build up until they became a big thing. And it happened years and generations before when they began to live comfortably among the pagans and began to think like them, began to act like them, and little by little became less faithful to God and less obedient to God until they wound up looking like some of the people around them to where they were uh, engaging in cult prostitution, child sacrifice, exploiting the poor, taking bribes and everything else. And no one would have ever dreamed in the beginning that this would have, could have ever happened. No one ever dreamed that they could have gotten so uh, sick uh, spiritually and socially and otherwise. But it didn't happen overnight. It's kind of like the frog in the kettle. You ever heard about the frog in the kettle before? Uh, if you put the frog in, in uh, if you take a frog and you put him in a vat of hot boiling water, you know what it's going to do, right? It's going to jump right back out. But if you put him in a in a uh, kettle of room temperature water and you turn up the temperature just little, little at a time, they won't notice a change and they'll actually sit there and boil to death. And the same thing can happen to us spiritually as well. It's cumulative. Benign neglect over a long period of time may not seem like a real big deal at first. Oh, I don't read my Bible every day. Not a big deal. I read my Bible less and less. That doesn't seem like a big deal. All right, I don't attend as often as I used to. I become more and more distant to my brothers and sisters in Christ. That may not seem like a big deal. And one thing after another after another, I stop praying. I stop thinking about God. Uh, and next thing I know, I become so weak, I'm nearly dead spiritually. And then some tragedy happens. And maybe God's getting my attention. And I don't know how to pray anymore because of years of neglect. I don't know what to do. And uh, so uh, um, the warning is uh, the warning is simply this. That's the, the third thing that I was thinking about. Prevention is better than treatment. And I know they say that... Uh, uh, it's much far better uh, to engage in a healthy lifestyle than to think about trying to take medicines and treatments uh, to uh, get better because of years of neglect. Um, exercising, eating right, staying active, these things aren't really hard to do. Um, the, 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 the challenge is to want to do them and to actually do them. Hebrews chapter 12 The entire book of Hebrews is a has a theme of steadfastness and staying uh, true over the long haul. And Hebrews chapter 12 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race that is marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And so the imagery here is of a long haul, of a long marathon, and uh, staying in the race for the long haul. 
And in order to do that, two things it mentions. One of the things, we need to stay focused on the goal, which is Jesus. We need to fix our eyes on Jesus. And number two, we need to throw off everything that hinders us, anything that keeps us from being focused on uh, the goal. We train and we train for races and we, uh, um, and we don't uh, uh, burden ourselves down with carrying a bunch of extra things uh, along with us. We don't get entangled with the things of the world. So we need to be focused on Christ. And how do we do that? Well, we do that through fellowship, through prayer, service, obedience, meditation, and all these things. But we cannot do it alone. Just a couple chapters earlier in the book of Hebrews, it reminds us that we need to consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. And we don't do that by forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, but by encouraging each other. Encouraging each other. And so we need to stay focused and encourage each other to stay focused on, uh, on our Christian life. And that brings me to the next thing I was thinking about. Uh, wellness. Wellness is fellowship with God. Bottom line, if I am going to be well inside and out, it only happens in fellowship with God. Proverbs 13:12 says, "Hope deferred makes the heart sick." Can you relate to that? Sometimes we're just waiting for the next big thing, the next big thing, and it always seems like there's always something else. And sometimes we go from day to day, we look forward to something, and hope deferred makes the heart sick. But, the proverb goes on, a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. A longing fulfilled is a tree of life. The only way we can truly have our deepest longings fulfilled is through God. And right now we live in a time where our hope is deferred. Um, but only our deepest uh, desire can be fulfilled in God. And notice that the, the uh, proverb says it is a tree of life. And the nice thing about a tree is it keeps on bearing fruit. It's something that continues. In fact, this reminds me of the final picture that we have in Scripture where it says that in the New Jerusalem in fellowship with God, one of the things that is there is a tree of life. And the tree of life is right there in the middle of the New Jerusalem and it says that its fruit is always in season all year round and its leaves are for the healing of the nations. And so whatever sickness we have, whatever whether it's a, a physical or emotional or spiritual, we'll find complete peace and wellness and healing in fellowship with God in eternity. And that's wellness. And the word that the Bible uses for that is the word peace. Uh, shalom in Hebrew. And that's, this means complete, total wellness uh, in the uh, presence of God. And so the Bible says that there will no longer be any sickness or pain and that everything will be just as it should be in fellowship with God. And so... Um, the encouraging thing is that whatever we deal with, whatever we deal with um, during this life, and there are some things I know, uh, I've heard someone say, you know, uh, we say that all things uh, are made right with God, and, but I'm convinced that there are some uh, things that will not be made right until he returns. Sometimes we become so scarred inwardly that the only time that it will be inwardly made right is when he returns. And we live with those scars from day to day, but we draw strength from that because we draw strength from God who uh, sees us through those things. But the final picture that we have here is that all things will be made right in the end. And we'll have joy and peace, contentment and wellness with God. And that is our hope deferred. And rest assured that hope will be fulfilled ultimately with God in heaven. And so we're going to go ahead and sing a song in just uh, a moment here. And I am reminded of Jesus when he came to this earth. He uh, uh, healed people of all of their afflictions and that was just a foretaste of the wellness to come when he returns. He's going to undo all the things that came as a result of sin and death and everything will be just as it should be. That's why he came from heaven to earth and died on the cross for our sins and rose up from the grave. We're going to go ahead and sing a song this morning and uh, 
Think about these things as we sing.